Well, um, my name is Kelly Pratt. I am a project manager and implementation consultant with Echo Consulting. And today we're gonna walk you through how to build a metrics sheet in Smartsheet. Uh, just really quick rules of engagement. Please feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. If you're in a situation where you're not able to unmute yourself or you'd rather use the chat box, you can also use that um, in Teams. Depending on if you're in a browser or app, it's either at the top or bottom of the screen and has a little bubble and says chat. So you can ask questions in there and we will have someone um, someone be looking after that. Uh, feel free to take notes if you'd like, but we will be sending out a recording of this webinar and the deck, although the majority of this webinar will be done live in Smartsheet. A little bit more about Echo Consulting. We are a project management services based consulting firm. Um, we do short term part time project management, um, but we also do a lot of PMIS implementations, process improvements, um, no code, low code development and smart sheet and other PMIS systems. So what to expect for today? So we're going to cover really just high level. What's the purpose and what's the use case for using a metric sheet? in Smartsheet and then we're going to dive right into Smartsheet and I'm going to walk you through how to build a metric sheet, um, walk you through some tips and tricks and also kind of train a little bit on really the most used formulas, at least in our experience in a metric sheet. Okay. So what is the purpose of a metric sheet? So a metric sheet in Smartsheet specifically it's really a resource for summarizing data across several sources. I think sometimes in Smartsheet they call them summary sheets. We call them metric sheets. It's really just a way, again, that you can use formulas to summarize data um, across uh, several different um, source sheets, for example. Um, it's the reason why we use metric sheets and like metric sheets is because they are a flexible tool for creating visuals. So um, Smartsheet has made a little bit of improvement in this space. So previously you couldn't make a chart with a report, but now you can. I think that came out sometime in the last six months to a year. Um, so there is a little bit more uh, opportunity to create dashboard visuals without the experience of formulas and creating a metric sheet. But the metric sheet does give you a little bit more flexibility around formatting and how you want things to show. Um, so we just really like it for that reason. Oh, this is at the end, so I'll come back to that. I do have some like helpful definitions. So also I'll be looking to my dream team on the call. If you guys are noticing I'm using some type of term that maybe is a Kelly Pratt coined term, please call me out so we can um, <laughs> so we can give you a definition of what I'm referencing when I jump in. All right, so um, on another webinar in the past, I did how to build a dashboard in Smartsheet. We can send that over as a helpful link as well that you can kind of pair with this webinar. Um, so again, when we're talking about a metric sheet, typically the things that those um, that a metric sheet is fueling on a dashboard is going to be these metrics widgets it's called a metric widget where you can show one specific number or you can even show um, a few specific you can show more than one value in those metrics widgets um, you can pull that from other data sources as well outside of a metric sheet but especially if you're summing up um, numbers or information it's a really easy place to put that it also is a source for creating charts on a dashboard so again you can create charts with a report as well. It just depends on the use case and how you want something to be formatted. So for example, um, I'll just give you a couple of examples for best practices. If you're looking to create a chart that is based on a contact column, um, typically I recommend doing that through a report because the contacts in whatever data source you have might come and go and might change. If you did it in a metric sheet, it's something you'd have to manually maintain, which I can show you that in a few minutes. So a report kind of has that value of being able to be ever changing and evergreen with whatever source you're looking at. Um, alternatively, if you look at this, so this is a, a stacked chart, right? So this is looking at a CRADE log. Um, you can see our kind of categories for what makes up CRADE, and then it's comparing that to the priority. You can do stack charts and reports, but sometimes just based on how your data 
is structured, you're not able to format it in the way that you would want to display a chart like this. So that would be a use case where it would be helpful to use a metric sheet rather than um, a report to create a chart like that, because I wouldn't be able to create that chart with a report, for example. So um, I'm going to get into my data sources really quick, just so you guys can understand kind of where I'm coming from. We have a standard Smartsheet implementation project plan that we use at our organization. So I'm going to be referencing some data from our project plan. And then I'll also be referencing some data from our CRADE log. And again, showing you how to summarize that data in a metric sheet. So here is a blank canvas of a metric sheet so we can walk through how to create one. But essentially, all I did here, of course, is just create a sheet in Smartsheet and called it a metric sheet. Um, typically, I am not renaming columns in a metric sheet because I'm going to be putting the values right within the sheet that I would be referencing for a chart. And so again, that's really the benefit of having a metric sheet is it's a blank canvas and you can really organize it or create it in whatever way is meaningful to you or makes the most sense to you and is helpful for you. Um, so I'll just walk you through how I personally and uh, people, folks on my team create them um, to keep us organized and use best practices. And um, we can also jump into some formulas. So. This metric sheet again, my two sources are project plan and CRADE log. So something I might do is I might kind of highlight, you know, across and just make this a color and then do project data. Right again, this is just preferential from like a um, organization perspective. So I know that any of the data that I put underneath here is specifically my project data and I might come down here and do the same type of thing. And this is for my CRADE log data to keep myself organized. So from um, the project perspective, one piece of data that I'm likely going to be interested in is how many, um, how many project plan line items do I have from a stat, like in each status, right? So our standard statuses are not started, in progress, complete, on hold, and canceled. So I'm typing these here for two different reasons. One, so that um, I can reference these values in my formula. And two, so obviously these values can show, if I wanted to create a chart with this, I could highlight all of this to create a chart, for example, and I would want these headings to be able to do that. Um, if I was just using it in a metric widget, you can just use the titling, but I'm still going to use this as what I would call a cell reference um, in my metric sheet so that I don't have to use, a, I don't know what this is called, but it's like a text reference, I think is what I would call it. So and let absolute. me walk you through. It's a relative absolute. reference. Yeah, it's a relative reference instead of a um, absolute. And so if Kelly uses not started in three or four different formulas and it all references the relative reference, if she needs to switch that to um, new instead of not started, she could switch it in one place and it would update <clears throat> all formulas that are referencing that relative reference. Awesome. Thank you, Molly. Yeah, I call it, I, I knew I had some personal lingo and I was calling it cell reference. So that's really helpful. So this is relative reference and I'll show you what an absolute reference is. So for these, the most common formula that, that I personally use um, in a metric sheet is a count if, count ifs formula. Some ifs as well, um, potentially if you're going to be um, summing, you know, revenue is a common one or just any value that you need to sum the values versus count the number of rows. But hands down, count if is the most, most common. So I'm going to do equals count if. Now I'm going to reference another sheet. So the great thing about Smartsheet is that when you start to type in a function um, for a formula, so count if is a function that you can use in a formula, it pops up this little helper box that tells you what are the pieces of information that you need to make this function work. I'll also share a helpful resource of just Smartsheet formulas in just a minute as well. But for this, obviously, I need to reference another sheet. The data that I'm looking for is not within this sheet, so I need to reference another sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a cross-sheet reference. 
So I'm going to click on that. It is important to note that Smartsheet does have a maximum limit of 100 cross sheet references in a single sheet. Um, that's not how many times you use the reference, but how many unique references. I it's it's very uncommon to hit that maximum, but worth mentioning. So I need to go into my webinar and I'm looking specifically for that um, Smartsheet implementation project. So this is the sheet that I want to reference. And I'm going to select the range of cells that I'm looking to reference. So in this one, I'm looking to count the tasks based on what status they're in. So I'm going to click on this status column. I click on the column header, and that's going to be the range that it looks at, and that's going to be what creates my cross sheet reference. Really, really important is to update your sheet reference name, because otherwise when you come back to your formula later, you might be like, what, what is Smartsheet implementation plan range one? So it's a really, really helpful tool to be naming them. Um, so I could just name it project plan status, for example, insert reference. So that's the name of the reference and that is referencing that range of cells. So I'm gonna do comma and then what's the criteria? So I'm specifically counting rows that have a status of not started. And that's how I use that relative reference. Just for um, sake of training, an absolute reference would have been if I did quotations and said not started. And there are use cases where you may use an absolute reference, but in a lot of cases in our metric sheet for the, these particular use cases, you're going to use a relative reference. And just to reiterate the value there is if you ever change that not started value to something else, you only have to change it. You don't have to update all of your formulas. You can just change it in this one place. Kelly, another type of absolute reference is when you use the dollar sign. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, I was going to touch on that. So in this one, I'll touch on that in a bit because this one I don't really have a need for it. Um, but I'll touch on those those use cases in, in my next example. So for this, I've already written the formula. So now all I have to do is drag and drop it down. It's automatically going to update that reference to go down the column in this particular use case. And that um, note that Molly just made, there are, there are examples where you want to use dollar signs within your references um, in the formula so that it, when you drag and drop the formula, it is maintaining the correct relative reference or absolute reference. So let me walk through an example of that. So the example is I'm gonna use Crade as an example, and I wanna make that um, that stacked chart. So I have to create it by showing um, values in a column and showing values across a row, right? So Crade is change, uh, risk, action, issue, decision, and then I want to put the priorities here. I just need to look at what my priorities are or how they're named. The references do have to be exactly the same. They can't have any misspellings or extra spaces. So I just needed to check that. So, so Kelly could have just copied that instead of having to type it out in that way. Yes, I could have. It was just across. That's why I didn't. Yep. Perfect. OK. So this is going to be a count ifs formula because I'm going to be looking at several different components. So I'm going to do equals count ifs. And then you can see again that little helper that Smartsheet provides you on what's the format that you need to use. So I'm going to reference another sheet. And I'm going to say, oops, I'm looking for my crade log. And I'm going to look for crade type. So I'm going to update my reference name to be crade type. comma, change, and then my second reference is going to be the priority. Trade log priority, comma, and then matches this value. So in order to drag this formula down and across, and make it pull the data that I'm looking for, I do need to add in dollar signs into my relative references. 
um, so that it doesn't move on me, if that makes sense. So if I don't want um, the column to change, so for this reference, I always want it to reference this column. I do want it to move down as I drag and drop my cursor, but I don't want it to move over when I go to drag it across. So for that, I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of the column name. And that's going to make sure that when I drag across, it's going to stay looking at the reference in that column and it's not going to move it across. Um, for this one, it's the opposite. I actually just want the um, row to stay the same. Or maybe it's both actually. No, I think it's the row. I'm going to put the dollar sign there so that when I drag it down, it's going to stay within that specific row. Okay, I'm going to click enter. And I'm going to drag this down and then I'm going to drag this over. So if you double click in here, you'll see that it's still referencing the two pieces that I want to reference in this formula based on where I'm when I'm dragging it across. If I hadn't done that, if I hadn't put the dollar sign in front of the column, when I dragged it over this, this formula would have referenced the cell right to the left of it and continuing on. Right. And same thing for these top one. When I dragged it down, it would move it, this formula would be referencing this cell. I hope that makes sense. Please chime in if you have any questions on that, but essentially it's it's um, allowing me to provide a fixed reference to say, don't move these references. These are the ones that I wanna keep. Perfect. So now I have some create data and now I have some um, some project data. Another piece that I might um, that I might start to track is so we have um, health data in our um, in our project plan. So if I do red, yellow, green, and then we also have task type. So I might want to do um, like I want to know how many milestones are in the red health status, how many milestones are in the yellow, how many are in the green versus how many tasks are in the red, yellow and green. Right, so I'm going to do the same type of formula. Count ifs. Reference another sheet. Go to that project plan. And the first one I'm going to do is task type. I'm going to write project plan task type. Insert reference and reference this, and I'm going to put that dollar sign right in front of that reference again. Comma, reference another sheet. I'm going to be looking for the task health. So project plan task health. And um, I mean, sometimes um, the smart sheet will drop your cursor in the middle of your cross sheet reference for some reason. Just make sure you're always going to the end of the bracket and putting a comma at the end after rather than within. And then I'm going to reference this and I'm going to do the same thing with the row that I did below and enter that there. So then when I drag and drop it across and drag and drop it down, it's going to maintain those references that I'm looking for. So this is giving me data from a task type perspective, um, what task health it's in. And then what I might do is if I also just want a total and to be able to use this in a chart, I would just simply sum this information. And then when I drag this over, it's going to sum each of these. So then I can say, you know, not only are there six milestones in red and three, 31 tasks in red, we have total 37, you know, line items in our project plan um, that are in red versus yellow versus green. And then you can sometimes we'll also color code these just to Keep it clear that they're headings, but totally a preferential piece depending on what what your organization type is. Let's see. Um, a couple other really helpful data points in a metric sheet that we use are um, closed in the last seven days, open in the last seven days, and due in the last seven days. Um, so if I'm looking at my grade, let's just say I actually have these values. Their screen, so I'm just copy them in, right? So let's do opened in the last seven days, closed in the last 
seven days and do in the next seven days. And if you want to make these headings or just make them bold, everyone has different preferences there. So I'm going to do a count ifs formula for this as well. I'm going to go to my crate log and I'm going to crate type. Once you make a reference name that was used in another formula, it will just stay the same. So you don't have to change it every time. You only have to change it that one time, which is really helpful. And then it will be named the same across your entire sheet. So I'm going to insert reference there. Comma, do action. And then I'm going to do reference another sheet. And let's look for the created column. So I'm going to do create log created. And then for this one, I'm going to use another function within um, within this formula. So it's called the today function. So the today function can pull in today's date. So I'm going to do today. And then in the last seven days, I'm trying to remember what this one is, if it's less than or equal to today, minus seven days, I believe it is. So this is saying less than this little carrot or equal to today. And then if you just want, if you were just trying to match to today's date, for example, today would just have two parentheses open and closed with nothing in it. The plus or minus allows you to either look at seven days in the future if you did just seven or seven days in the past. So this is saying um, if they're less than or equal to seven days in the past. And I have my dollar sign there, so I can just move that one over. I'm going to skip over closing the next seven or in the last seven days because that's pretty much the same formula, but then doing the next seven days would be the opposite. So if I'm going to do count ifs, right? Trade type. Reference this. And then do we're going to look for the due date. Due date. And the next, and this would be positive seven, I believe. That would pull that in. Drop those over. My formula might not be quite right on that one. Charlie, am I writing that one right? You just needed to add the status because if it's due in the next day, <clears throat> seven days, you want to make sure that it's not already closed. Ah, yep. Good call out. Good call out. But anyways, that's just a data thing. Yep. I'm going to add that in. So that's a good use case actually in a formula. So um, trade log status. And then you would do the caret and open caret and closed caret means is not equal to. And then what I can actually do is I can reference Actually, it's not the same because that's the project plan. So I might want to add a relative reference somewhere um, for what that status is. And this one, it is closed. So I'm just going to use an absolute reference for sake of this example, but I might want to reference that in another place. I probably would have a status of all my grade items by status, just like I had for project plan. And then in this formula, I would be able to reference that specific cell um, rather than doing this absolute reference. Try and drop that over. Oops. Awesome. So you can see again, it's really a blank canvas. You can be as creative and organize it in whatever way that makes sense to you. I do in the last couple minutes, and I'll close out with a few minutes for questions as well. Um, there's a couple of resources that I really like to use a lot for um, writing formulas in Smartsheet. So there is a functions list. So this essentially provides you with a list of all functions that are available within Smartsheet. It's very similar to functions that are like available in Excel. Pretty much all of them are available. 
some there are some slight differences and Smartsheet has some of their own. So there's that link. Another helpful resource that I like to use um, is formula error messages. So they have a page on error messages and what may be causing the error message to help you troubleshoot a little bit. Is it because my comma is in the wrong place? Is it because my brackets aren't quite right? Or is it because I'm referencing that some that does something that does not make sense for this particular function? So those are a couple of helpful resources um, that you can use. If I go back to the other one, just to show you uh, one of these pages, it's pretty cool. Um, they show you the same thing that you get that help little box up on like I was referencing, but it also shows you examples of how the formula is used. And sometimes it will show you examples of how two different functions can be used in a formula. So if you need help kind of writing a formula, um, that's a great resource. Another great resource if you're struggling with formulas is the Smartsheet community. They are immensely helpful and they're also very Googleable. So you can either just search for something that you may uh, something that you may be looking for or a solution you may be looking for. If you can't find it, you can also just post in the community. And a lot of times there's really helpful um, folks in the community that will just answer and tell you, hey, you have your formula written wrong. You need to move this here or you actually need to add this in. And then you kind of get the formula for you and then you have it in your repertoire to use next time. Awesome. Kelly, can you just bring us full circle and and show really quick how to add one of these single metrics and the chart metric to the dashboard? Yeah, absolutely. So here I am in the dashboard. When I click on the pencil icon to edit the dashboard, over here you have all of your widgets that you can add. So if you use a metric widget, click on that, you would add data. And then you would find your specific metric sheet that you're looking for. And then you would select whatever whatever number you're looking for and click that here. So that's where the name of your um, reference doesn't necessarily show in here. So I would just come in here and type in like at risk tasks, for example. Then you can format that however, however you'd like. So that's an example of just using it in one singular place. From a chart perspective, so if I go to add data, go to metric sheet. I can highlight this whole um, block again to show those two references. And then it's automatically going to default to what chart it wants. So this is like a, what's called a clustered column chart, um, but you can use this to have a stacked column, right? So you can see the number of risks, but then categorized by priority. Um, and you can show the value label too. Eight, five, priority. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Well, we really appreciate your time, and I hope this content was valuable. Um, don't um, uh, hesitate to reach out in this message chat again if you have any questions. We will send you a recording of this video um, and any additional resources, the links that I mentioned, a reference to the how to build a dashboard um, webinar that I also did. So you can kind of connect the two together. So we'll send you out all those resources so you can use them in the future.